Welcome everybody, my name is Laura Shu, and in this video I'm going to show you the highlights of what's new in the Lightroom 5 Beta. Now I have a whole series of videos that goes into all of the details of how to use these tools. So I'm going to go through them really quickly here so that I can give you all of the highlights. Now the minimum system requirements for Lightroom 5 are Lion or Mountain Lion on the Mac or Windows 7 or Windows 8 on the PC. Now I'm here in the develop module and I'm going to start with my favorite new feature which is the old spot removal tool on steroids. I'm going to zoom in on these power lines here. In the past I could have fixed these power lines or removed them with overlapping circles. But now I have the option first of all to do a click at the top here and I'll take that source from down here and then I can hold the shift key down and click here at the right hand side and I've got a linear fix here. If I type H, you can see that they're miraculously gone. And I could do click, shift, click to remove the other power line as well. Let me go ahead and go to another photo though. And I'm going to remove the fence from this photo. Now I could do click, shift, click, but this is even cooler. I'm going to click, hold, and drag as I define the area that I want to remove. So we'll just do this part of the fence first. If I type H, I can see that it took the source from up top somewhere. That looks fine. I'll just go ahead for the sake of time and I'll go ahead and remove the rest of this fence. And then I'll do Ctrl or Command minus so I can get that source and maybe take it from over here. And then I can type H and we can see that the fence is miraculously gone except this part in the center that I missed. The click and drag functionality on the healing brush is really my favorite new tool. So off, on, the fence is gone. Now this can be great used at lower opacity on portraits for retouching. So watch my longer video on all of the how-to of the advanced healing brush. The next thing I want to show you here in the spot removal tool is the visualize spots option. Now I'm going to go to a very boring photo that has a lot of spots just to show you how powerful this could be. Now I can visually see a couple of spots here but let's use this visualize spot option here in the spot removal tool. Now I've got the slider here to indicate how high contrast the lines have to be or how low contrast. But I'll go ahead and pump it all the way up and notice all the spots up here in the sky that I couldn't see immediately otherwise. Now the shortcut A turns off visualize spots. So I can do Ctrl or Command plus here and space and we can actually see very faintly a lot of these spots that it identified. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next new feature here, which is the radial filter tool. This allows us to create off-center vignetting or other elliptical local changes. I've clicked on the radial filter tool and I'm going to click, hold, and drag from the center of the flower out to the shape that I'd like. And notice I can make it as wide or as tall as I'd like. I'll go ahead and let go. And then I'll reduce the exposure and you'll see that what I'm doing is changing the area outside of the oval. And of course I can change the placement of this. I can also invert this mask so that I'm affecting the inside of it. And I can reduce the feathering as well. I've got another video that goes into this in much more detail. Now I'm noticing that I'm looking at the Lightroom 3 controls rather than the Lightroom 4 controls. So I need to update this photo to the newest process version. That was new in Lightroom 4. I don't see an exclamation point here. In Lightroom 5, I have this little lightning bolt symbol here to click on to update the process version. So now I'm seeing the newer controls here and I can make additional changes. Let's go to the next new feature, which is upright down in the lens corrections panel. I'm going to go to this photo which has already been corrected. So I'll go ahead and turn upright off just so that you can see it here. I've enabled profile corrections and notice that my profile is now on this profiles tab rather than on the basic tab. But I'm going to go ahead and click on auto and you see how fast Lightroom can now fix perspective issues as well as straighten horizons. So when I clicked on auto it did both. I've also got additional options here as well. Watch my video on Upright for all of the details on this tool. Now we had tools in the past to straighten horizons and fix perspective, but this is an automatic method. 
Okay, just a couple more things I want to show you here in the develop module. First, for those of you that know what the lab color space is, if I right click in the histogram, I can choose to show my color values in the lab color space. As I move my mouse into the image, you're seeing lab readouts here below the histogram. The last feature I'll show you here in the develop module is also available in the library module. We now have the ability to have grid and guide overlays. If I go up to view, loop overlay, I've got grid and I've got guides. Let's take a look at the grid. If I hold down the controller command key, I get controls for size and opacity. I'll go up to view, loop overlay, and choose guides. If I hold down the controller command key, I can reposition the guides. And then controller commands alter option O will turn off the overlay and also turn it back on again. Now I've neglected to mention what may be the biggest improvement here in Lightroom 5 in the develop module for many folks, and that's performance. First, as I move from library to develop, it's almost instant. That used to be a major frustration for me. Lightroom is only loading panels that are open, which speeds that up tremendously. You'll also notice that as you move from photo to photo, the loading time is less than it was before because Lightroom uses whatever preview it has available. Now you can also reduce that loading time with another new feature called Smart Previews. So let me talk about Smart Previews briefly. And again, I've got a full video on the how-to of Smart Previews. Smart Previews are designed primarily to allow me to edit my photos when I don't have access to the originals. So if I'm traveling with my laptop and I've got my Lightroom catalog on my laptop, and I build smart previews in that catalog for my photos. Even if I don't have my masters with me, I have access to almost all of the functionality here in Lightroom. So I've got photos on this external hard drive, and I've built smart previews by selecting the photos and then going to Library, Previews, Build Smart Previews. Now that I've done that, I'm going to unplug this hard drive, and Lightroom is going to lose the connection to these photos. However, notice that I've got these little black squares next to the photos indicating that I have smart previews available. Now here in the library module, I have access to Quick Develop. I also have access to Develop. So it used to be that you couldn't edit your photos. You couldn't develop your photos if the originals were not online. Not only can you develop the photos, but you can create output with these smart previews as well. You can export copies with the smart previews available. Now these smart previews are lossy DNG files. They're compressed DNG raw files. They're a maximum of 2,540 pixels on their longest edge. So when you export, you'll be limited to that. But these lossy DNG files take up so much less space than the originals that it's now feasible to create and store them on a smaller hard drive with your catalog and keep your bulky hard drive or multiple hard drives with your masters back at home. You'll see you can create these smart previews during the import process. You can create them for just folders of photos you want to be able to access offline. You can create them for your entire catalog. The other advantage of smart previews is that, as I referred to earlier, it reduces the load time in develop. Even if Lightroom has access to the originals, because Lightroom can load the smart preview really quickly, so it will start with that and then move to your original without you having to wait. Okay, let me go ahead and go on to additional new features here. We also have support for PNG files that you may have created in Photoshop or in Illustrator. So you can import them and edit them here in Lightroom. As you take them back to Photoshop, Photoshop will create a PSD or a TIFF file from them. Next, I'm going to go to the book module to show you what's new here. First, we have the option here in the page panel to add page numbers to our pages. We can control the placement, of the page numbers, and we can also control the style of the page numbers. If I select my page numbers, then I can come down to the Type panel, and I can change the font and the size and other features of the text. I have further control in terms of being able to start my page numbers on a particular page. I can hide page numbers on any page. For example, I've hidden it on this blank page. So watch my video that goes into detail on the book module changes for how to work with page numbers. But that's a very welcome addition. 
We also have the ability to save page formats. On this page, I've chosen a four photo layout, but I've gone further and added padding to increase the spacing between my photos. And I'd like to save this layout so that I can use it on other pages in the book as well as in future books. I can do that by selecting the page, right clicking, and saving as a custom page. This page format will be available to me here in the page panel under custom pages. Notice also while I'm in here that we have these little circles to assign particular page formats to our favorites. So it's an easier way to assign photos to our favorites. We also have the ability to access more metadata for use in our photo captions. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in further on this page and you'll see that I've put here the caption from the metadata for this photo along with the exposure. I've been able to do that using the text panel here. I've been able to go into what's called the template editor here to set up this rule. Again, watch the book module changes video for more detail on that. The last change here is designed to make it easier for people to figure out how to add text. If I click on this page, you'll see that I have this add page text button. It adds a page caption. We've always been able to add a page caption here, but you have to know to come down to this text panel and turn it on and then start typing. So the convenience of that add text button takes away that mystery on how to do that. The last new feature I'd like to show you is in the slideshow module. I'm going to go ahead and go to a different collection of photos here. and We'll go to the slideshow module. The big new change here is that we're able to include videos in our slideshow. So in this particular collection, I've got two photographs and one video. I'm going to go ahead and just preview the slideshow here in the slideshow module. And you'll see that I've got a photograph and then upcoming I've got a photograph. And then next, I've got a crazy laser pointer video. So that's also a nice welcome feature. The Lightroom team has also made an improvement in how your soundtrack syncs with your slides. So when you fit your soundtrack to your slides, it will do a better job of figuring out how long the slides should play. It didn't use to take into account how your individual system performed. So that's the highlights on what's new in the Lightroom 5 beta. Watch my videos for more detailed information. Download the software from Adobe Labs and let Adobe know what you think of the changes that they've made. Now you won't be able to upgrade your Lightroom 4 catalog with the Lightroom 5 beta. The Lightroom team is protecting you from any bugs or any changes that they might make before the official release of Lightroom 5. I would suggest importing a subset of your photos into the Lightroom 5 beta and experimenting with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Laura Shue.